Hello everyone and welcome to what is totally my actual living room. We have some news for Priest or Kingdom, they released their, their monthly dev blog and it has information on the upcoming update 11 which will come later this month in April. That's not an April Fool's joke, it is coming later this month. So we have a lot of content to look forward to and I wanted to go through it quickly because I'm actually hard at work on tomorrow's video so this video is a little bit late but let's get into it. Let me pop out my projector screen there you go and i'm gonna be screen sharing and here we have the dev diary for march 2024 for prehistoric kingdom all right so the first bit of news that they had to share is that they have gotten nigel marvin back in the studio to complete you know the audio recordings that they have for their dinosaurs you know Nig nigel marvin famously and beautifully narrates these um these little bits of information for the animals, you know, when you first release them and you click on them, you get this nice clip of Nigel Marvin talking about the species. Some species were missing this narration. They are now, you know, completing that lineup and even so far as completing, um, let's see where they, where they said that so I can actually highlight it. Uh, but they're actually completing, there you go. Soon we'll have lines for almost every animal that we're planning to release during early access. So they're putting Nigel Marvin at work. Uh, next bit of news is a, is a tiny tweak that they've done to the, the cave lions and the American lions in the previous update. You know, there was like the caveman, the Stone Age update that introduced these new species. And they're a little traumatized. They acknowledge this themselves. Um, we're not sure what horrors they might have experienced, as you can definitely see in the face there. Uh, but they fixed it in update 11, which again is coming later this month, so that's exciting. I am working on a prehistoric kingdom build, I promise. I'm actually working on a prehistoric kingdom build that involves the cats. Considering the update that's coming, I might push that until the update actually comes out to make that build. A little bit more relevant again, I suppose. I got completely sidetracked by the secret species pack for Jurassic World Evolution 2. I apologize about that. It got a little bit derailed. But there is something in the work, I promise. Um, anyway, we're gonna move on. There's a supporter bundle if you want to support the game. Uh, you know, support the development and all of the awesome work that the developers are doing for this game. You can get this bundle. Uh, it gives you access to their art book, which... I imagine it's actually really interesting. Look at like the designs for dinosaurs that they go into, uh, even the design process for something that you might brush off as really simple, like a donation box. You can see all of the iterations that that goes through in order to come to the final design, stuff like that. It's really interesting. Uh, if you agree and you want to support this game, I think that, yeah. You should, you should get something like this. Uh, you can also get the soundtrack for the game, either on Steam or Bandcamp. I gotta be honest, maybe I'm showing my age. I don't know what that is. <laughs> One time at Bandcamp. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can also get it on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube Music. Pretty much any other platform you prefer. Moving on, moving on. In development, update 11. So this is actually what we're going to be in, getting in late April. As it says right here, in late April, we'll be rolling uh, update 11 out onto the public testing branch on Steam so that we can gather feedback and continue developing this update. So what that means is that you have the base game that you get by default, but through the, uh, through the properties, you can access a beta version of the game, the public testing branch, and by the end of April, that will include the stuff from update 11. Now, probably the most exciting thing coming is the new species. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be struggling here. Please hold my hand through this process because it's, it's quite the journey. Lielinosaura. 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 That's what we're going with. So the new species coming again late April is Lielinosaura. There you have it. Looking wonderfully fluffy as southern parts of australia were located within the antarctic circle during the early cretaceous it's possible that sunlight would have been highly variable with this animal potentially going weeks without sunlight we've chosen to highlight the various levels of cold tolerance lielinosaura might have had through varying lengths of plumage per skin unlike other small herbivorous dinosaurs in prehistoric kingdom these ones have quite the frightening dentition. Yeah, honestly, it just looks like a um, 
a vampire Dryosaurus that put on a nice coat. That's that's how I would describe it. But here you have the alternate skins that are available as well. I find this one quite creepy. <laughs> but like the the semi naked face, it's, it's, it's a little. It's not. It's not very cute. This one's cute. You know, with the big fluffy feet, I like that. We're gonna move on the the secret species that they are teasing, which is also coming in update 11. Uh, this is the hint that they're giving. It's not another theropod. I have to admit, I'm not as well versed in the prehistoric kingdom social media lore to be able to decipher this. So let me know in a comment down below if you have a good guess on what this new species might be. So you get Lielinosaura and whatever this is going to be, two new dinosaur species coming to the game at the end of April. Uh, species, pl species splitting, which sounds a little terrifying, but what it really means is that in the menu, they're gonna be separating the species that are currently under a single tile, I suppose. So for example, the two Smilodon species are currently in game under one Smilodon tile. And when you click on that tile, you can choose the other variant, the other species. They're gonna be splitting that up. I don't think it's gonna be that much more user-friendly um, to have like this overwhelming selection of tiles of very similar species. I actually quite like and might prefer the way it is currently, of course, I'm gonna have to hold off judgment until it's actually in the game. The nursery will be receiving a big UI overhaul down the line to better accommodate these changes, so please stay tuned for that. Oh, there you go. So, never mind. Whatever I just said, never mind. <laughs> They're already on it. <laughs> Early staff and logistics gameplay. In this part of the Dev Diary, we're going to walk you through what to expect from logistics and the overall gameplay loop it presents. When update 11 releases, we'll only have keepers and laborers available as they are the most essential at this stage of development. The remaining staff types, janitors, engineers, security, and vets will be added as their gameplay systems become relevant. And you can see just how in-depth Prehistoric Kingdom is, not just in terms of the modular building, which is how I think it currently sets itself apart from Jurassic World Evolution 2, but it's really gonna set itself apart uh, once complete with the level of depth in terms of management that they're providing. And even just the staff shows that, you know, in Jurassic World Evolution 2, we have rangers and scientists. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, and here you have just a whole swath of, uh, <laughs> of, of people. <laughs> Yay, people. Uh, but yeah, you can see some of their designs here. You see the keeper, the laborer. Um, you know, what, what they're going to be tasked with, like keeping the feeding stations for the animals filled. Very important. <laughs> to get resources into the zoo, players will first need to build a loading bay upon the initial first time placement. Players will receive an immediate shipment of goods to help get the park up and running. Uh, again, just re realism. A whole lot of realism is going into it. You're really going to feel like you're managing an actual park. And you're gonna have to be thinking about things that, for example, in Jurassic World Evolution 2, you don't have to think about. And here you see the loading base that you can purchase. And of course, this is a modular building, so you could customize this if you want, but this is, you know, the default building. Uh, once the resources have arrived, players will need staff to transport them around the zoo. Laborers can carry the meals and merchandise to guest facilities while keepers are needed to refill feeders with animal feed. You have a staff center, which does feel a little bit familiar if you're playing Jurassic World Evolution 2. I keep comparing it to Jurassic World Evolution 2 just for, just for reference. I don't think it's necessarily uh, that the two games should be compared, uh, but it's just a reference point. It's like a, a point of recognition, I suppose. That's why I keep bringing it up. Don't get mad at me, okay? I see you. I see you. I see you typing. Stop it right now. <laughs> Um, here you have, they're all called John Smith currently. I'm sure that that will, that will get fleshed out eventually. But yeah, they're all going to have names. They're going to have a little about section. Uh, they're getting a star rating apparently. We believe your primary role as park manager should focus on who you hire, how many people you hire, 
and how you lay out the park's logistics infrastructure rather than micromanaging where your staff are and what they are doing. If jobs aren't being done, you likely don't have enough people or your layout stinks. I love their blunt language. Honestly, there's, there's quite a bit of humor in this dev diary. And I am going to link it in the description box if you just want to read through this yourself and get into all of the details. Um, there's, uh, it's time to introduce some goods storage and produce storage modules. Let's see if we have a picture. We do indeed. Good storage, produce, small, uh, produce storage, excuse me. I'm gonna go through these a little bit more quickly, actually. As a sandbox builder, you know, this is the sort of stuff that's, you know, not really what I'm personally into. And speaking of what I'm personally not into, excrement. <laughs> Wow, that was, that was a segue. <laughs> uh, but yes, a dinosaur excrement is going to be a thing in Prehistoric Kingdom. And dealing with it is going to be a thing in Prehistoric Kingdom uh, through the compost heap module. So basically what's going to happen is your keepers right here, your keepers are going to be cleaning the habitat. Uh, you can see the in like the example image, there's a tiny habitat with two massive piles of dung. Your keepers are going to have to clean that up and bring that over to the compost heap. And it's actually that that poop. Let's just let's just not use fancy words here. The poop is actually going to be used. Um, let's see. Once delivered, the stored poop will convert to compost over time, a resource that will become invaluable when making your own animal feed. So it really is a circle of life because we're going from poop to creating produce in the produce station. Um, so you're gonna be using, you know, the compost to fertilize um, the ground in your produce stations, produce the produce, which is gonna be used to feed your dinosaur. So, you know, it becomes this, this loop. Again, circle of life. Uh, I love the amount of thought that goes into it. It's probably not something I would mess with uh, a whole lot myself. I'm, I'm more about the building, TBH. Uh, but here you have these adorable little produce stations uh, growing food. You can see carrots right here, <laughs> which makes me think of my bunny right away. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're going to be growing your own produce to be feeding your dinosaurs with, which I think is super clever. I think it's really cool. And I think people who are really into the management aspect of games like this are gonna get a huge kick out of this. It's um, it's really, it's really lovely. Like the the level of thinking that went into this. A uh, logistic system in review, a chart to sort of make everything clear because I probably failed to do that. Again, I will link this all in the description box so you can check it out yourself. Um, I just I'm just sharing this video in case you don't feel like reading. You just feel like. Uh, I don't know why, but in case you feel like joining me in my living room with my T-Rex walking by, you can do that. You know, you're more than welcome. Take a seat on one of these pillows on the floor. <laughs> Gameplay changes to excavations. Excavations are what allows prehistoric kingdom to bring extinct animals back to life. Scouring the globe in search of viable genetic materials. In the current game, however, the excavation mechanics really is nothing more than a glorified shopping menu. With update 11, we aim to rectify this. So there's a new system, the Fossil Depot. This building provides space for the park's dig team and grants access to the excavation menu. Uh, so here is the building itself. And here is the UI that you will be entering in order to go digging for your dinosaurs. By hovering over a dig site, players will be able to see the potential operating costs of an excavation, the estimated time per excavation cycle, and whether or not there are events impacting the dig site. Once opened, up to five dig teams can be assigned at once. Let's see if they mention what these mysterious events are. Um, so here's another look at the excavation process and what you as a manager are going to be doing. Each excavation cycle, your assigned teams will send their findings back to the park in the form of DNA. The yield amount of for, uh, excuse me, the yield amount for DNA is random, but can be improved by installing infrastructure at the dig site, such as housing 
and their own personal genetics lab. Um, you can improve the dig yield. Uh, completing all animals within a dig site will unassign the relevant teams and return them to the park. Oh, here you go. Events. Everything we've discussed so far assumes that your excavation has gone smoothly. Every month, there are global events that randomly impact dig sites all across the globe. A positive event, like the fossil boom, love that, can help speed up the excavation process, drastically increasing the yield amounts for as long as the event is event is active in a dig site. On the other hand, a negative event like high export tax can increase your operating costs, excavation time, and lower yields as your teams struggle to send your excavated goods back to the park. Uh, so here you have that in UI4, no event, positive event, negative event. Uh, another overview of the work in progress UI for the excavation. I love how modern and sleek it all looks, but I am personally getting a little bit overwhelmed by all of the, uh, all of the information. <laughs> Something that Prehistoric Kingdom has been getting ribbed for a little bit are the way the guests currently look. Uh, they're aware of that. And of course, we all know the game is in early access. Um, so any sort of feedback is, of course, with that caveat that we know things are going to be changing. And guess is one of the things that are going to be changing. They're overhauling the guests. And you have a couple of examples here of what they're doing to make their guests look better. Not all of these are going to be in-game as of update 11. Uh, some, there are some technical things required to make the selfie work. Uh, but we hope this shows our commitment to improving the quality of our humans. So it's really just a little, little taste of what's to come, honestly. And a little section about the future ontogeny art tests. And I want to preface this by saying, you know, we have this line here. The future. This is not for update 11. Update 11 is not going to bring the baby dinosaurs. We've discussed baby dinosaurs in the previous Prehistoric Kingdom devlog, uh, the video that I did on that. Um, they're touching on it again because they know it's a very popular topic, of course, and they, they want to keep us excited, keep our appetites wet. But this is not coming in April. That's just very important. Uh, but they are giving us a glimpse at the little baby Tyrannosaurus, which is adorable. It's a look at the size of that thing. It's amazing. So yeah, we're seeing the little feathered baby Tyrannosaurus here. You're seeing a juvenile Tyrannosaurus in the backdrop. Now, what they're doing for Prehistoric Kingdom, all babies for all of the, you know, uh, subspecies are going to look the same. I say subspecies, I mean more like the different skins. That's what I should say. So, for example, the T-Rex has a couple of different skins. A couple of scaly skins and one feathered skin. The baby is always going to be this exact baby right here. A feathered baby. And as it grows up, as they describe in this section right here... Um, all Tyrannosaurs would start as feathered infants and either lose feathers through maturation, growing up into a scaly skin, or retain them, growing up into the feathered skin. So all of the T-Rex babies are going to look like this, and then eventually as they grow up, they morph into whatever adult skin that you chose to incubate it as. Another thing to note is that baby dinosaurs doesn't mean breeding. It's an ontogeny system. So what this means is you would incubate the baby from the hatchery and you would raise it out in its enclosure to adulthood. It doesn't mean that the adults you have in the park will be reproducing on their own. That is something they're planning uh, again for the future. <laughs> but that's not something uh, that's like on the horizon. The ontogeny system is on the horizon at some point, not update 11. Uh, but after that is implemented, that's when they're going to be setting their sights on breeding and adding that to the game. I apologize for this rambly video. Again, I was working on another video coming tomorrow, uh, but I hope that you just appreciated exploring this devlog with me. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me. And I promise you, I promise you, there are builds coming for Prehistoric Kingdom. Uh, plants just got derailed by a Spinoraptor temporarily, but things, things are gonna go back on track. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.